Looking at our first reading, the beginning of <clears throat> Aristotle's Politics, which uh, I, I don't think it's possible not to be ambivalent about Aristotle, um, especially his political thought. Uh, if you're not familiar with the word ambivalent, it's one of my favorite words. It just means having mixed feelings about something. Um, and I think that this is typical once we confront the great works of the past. Uh, if we look into them in any depth, we are bound to be ambivalent about them. And I'll tell you right away why I say this. Uh, on the one hand, uh, it's a very important work. And this is where we get this incredible statement um, that I put in the greatest hits. Uh, top of page three, hence it is evident that the state is a creation of nature and that man is by nature a political animal. It's uh, a milestone in Western thought when Aristotle says that. And we'll see, you know, why he says that. And there's a certain greatness to it, I think. And in a certain way, I suppose I am uh, grateful to Aristotle for giving the world that thought. On the other hand, <laughs> he says things like, uh, like this on the top of page two, when he's describing the oikos, the household. Uh, he says, for that which can foresee by the exercise of mind is by nature intended to be lord and master, and that which can with its body give effect to such foresight is a subject, and by nature a slave. Hence, master and slave have the same interest. This is foreshadowing his argument we'll see in the second reading where he, he tries, and I would imagine clearly fails, but tries to uh, justify slavery, the, the master-slave relationship. But he goes farther and, <clears throat> you know, he has, he has this idea that, that women are inferior to men too. It's, you know, really unfortunate, obviously mistaken idea in Aristotle, but uh, important to acknowledge that, that he's reflecting the widespread opinion among men. Uh, they were superior to women at the time. And in, in fact, it was a pretty rare thinker who could acknowledge the equality of women before, and we'll see, Mary Wollstonecraft's great uh, vindication of the rights of woman in uh, 1791. You know, more than 2,000 years later, it would first manifesto of, uh, of women's equality, women's rights. But so that, that, you know, I'm ambivalent about Aristotle. I, I mean, it's a sort of the essential part of your essential reading if you want to understand the course of Western thought, but it's not all great.